you're here, if you're visiting, or if you are uh, new, or we'd love to hang out with you at Pizza with the Pastor. Hey, and lunch is on us. So RSVP, so we make sure we have enough in uh, child care and all the rest. I know we had a great turnout this week for our um, serving opportunity, so I just want to say thank you for those who came. Uh, actually, I wasn't able to make this one, but I love going to these. It's our opportunity to um, partner with a ministry called Philabelli that helps feed our friends experiencing homelessness. And so thank you for everybody who contributed, who brought food, who came and served. I know it's always, always a great turnout. It's almost like one of those things where we're like, hey, hey, hey we, we, got, we got a lot of people. Maybe we got to kick a few people off the list because we got so many people. And that's a great problem to have. We don't kick anybody off the list. I'm just saying it's a great problem when you have too many people. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. Pastors like it when there's a lot of people. That's just a thing. It's like our love language. People are like, hey, I want to get involved. I'm like, all right, all you got to start showing up and uh, fill some seats. And that's step one. And because uh, pastors like full spaces, it's just a way we're wired. And so I think heaven's a little bit like that, don't you? Some of you are like, I just prefer a real small church. You're not going to like heaven. It's not small. It's big. There's billions and billions of people there. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so it's going to be awesome. Hey, something we say here. I'm just in a weird mood today. Just deal with it. Uh, <laughs> Something we say here at the Stage Church often is that uh, we don't exist just to hang out on Sundays. It's so that we would impact our community, that what we do in here spreads from out of here, impacting the good for good. And, and we, like Jesus taught us to pray that it would, his kingdom would come here on earth just as it is in heaven. And we like to personalize that, localize that, if you will, and say in North County as it is in heaven. So what you're doing here is important. It's making a difference, and it is impacting eternity. I don't know if you believe that or not, but man, I hope to convince you of that truth and that reality. And one of the ways that we impact the people around us and the neighborhoods and the community around us is by trusting God in the area of giving. And you might say, uh, how does that impact the area around us? Well, we like to say that you don't just give to the church, you give through the church. Because this church exists not just for a Sunday morning gathering, although I love this. Anybody like coming here Sundays? You're here, so hopefully that's everybody. And somebody's just like, no, I was dragged here by my neighbor. Look, I'm so glad you're here too. But uh, hopefully you like it by the time we're done today. But <laughs> we like to say that if, if our doors were to close, there would be a lot of people that would miss us. And that's our goal and our mission that we're involved with. And we partner with many different ministries regularly, monthly, and uh, this, this all, uh, it matters. It all is making a difference. So if you would like to give, there's all kinds of ways you can. They're on the screen. You could just text. You could open up our app. If you don't have our app, well, you should download that. That's only $69.95. And um, that's not true. Nobody laughs at that. That's uh, It's a free app. Um, it's a lot of ads, but it's free. No, it's not true either. It's no ads, but uh, you can give through our app. You can give on our website. You can give on, I don't know, all kinds of ways. Venmo, it's all there. So thank you for your generosity. Hey, I'm excited about the word today. You guys bring a Bible with you to church? Anybody bring a Bible with you to church? Who's got a glowing Bible? Got, you have, yeah, some glowing Bibles. Got them charged up. That's yeah, all the same. Hey, uh, we're going to be in the book of First Samuel today. I've got a longer passage of scripture I want to read to you. But before we unpack the word, I'd like to always pray. How many of you guys believe that a, a godly church, a, a Jesus-loving church is a praying church? I don't know if you feel comfortable coming up forward when we have our prayer team. But, man, that is when stuff happens. It's not just kind of the opening act. It's not just a nice little, we're like, oh, that would be nice. We should probably add that in there. No. That's when shift occurs. Things in the spirit realm start moving. These, this, these prayer peeps you see are not casual. They, they're strapped up. They're warriors. They come in early before all y'all maybe even woke up, and they're upstairs praying over the service. They're filled with faith, and they're just like, give me somebody, God. Bring somebody. I'm ready, to, I'm ready to stand with them, partner with them in faith, and see some change happen. We've seen miracles happen as a result. So we're going to pray. That's what I'm getting to. We're going to pray before we open up the word. You guys ready? Jesus, we thank you that you're here. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would speak to our hearts today, that it wouldn't be thoughts or opinions of a man, but God, that everybody within the sound of my voice would hear from heaven today. Lord, we know that one word from you can change the trajectory of our lives. May that happen today, we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said, amen. amen. I felt your prayers in that moment. Thank you. First Samuel chapter 3, this will be on the screen. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. 
One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am. You called me? But Eli said, I didn't call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up, went to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Anybody hear a little irritation in that, in that line right there? He's like, you waking me up? Like, go lay down. Verse 7, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli again and said, here I am. You called me? Then Eli realized the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went, lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling as the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. Who would like their ears to tingle today? (laughs) I believe that God not only spoke to Samuel, not only spoke throughout Scripture, the Old Testament and the New, but he still speaks today. That he wants to speak to you and make your ears tingle. Tingle. I want to chat with you today just for our remaining few minutes, just 60 or 90 minutes. And I want to just share with you, that's a joke, just share with you about the ever so important discipline of hearing the voice of God. John 10, verse 27, Jesus said, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. One of the evidences that you're a sheep, you know, the Bible calls those of us who follow Jesus sheep. Aren't you encouraged? You are a defenseless, smelly, dumb animal. <laughs> That's what God thinks about you. No, I'm just kidding. But he calls, he calls those of us who follow him sheep. And then it makes the differentiation between those who are God's people and those who are the devil's people. He calls them goats. So it's a, you want to be, you want to be a sheep. I know you don't feel like it, but the devil has goats and God has sheep. And you know, one of the most distinctive differences between sheep and goats is their coat type, their coats. Most sheep have these thick wool coats and they need to be sheared every year to prevent them from overheating during the summer months. Goats, however, have hair on their bodies that does not need to be sheared. So you know you're a follower of Jesus if you feel like you're getting cut. <laughs> if you feel like you're getting sheared and you're just like, ah, oh, why is this happening to me? I look at other people and they don't even love God. They don't even serve God. They don't even go to church, read their word, pray. They don't even do, and, and nothing seems to be going wrong for them. Well, the Bible says that the Lord disciplines those he loves. So do not despise his chastening. Listen, sometimes God cares more about, I'm going to correct that, all the time God cares more about our eternal eternal soul than our temporary comfort and so he will shear away he will cut he will discipline us so that we become all who he created us to be that's not part of the message that was just a side note but the the point I want to make is that God still speaks today he's still desiring to communicate with us there is some theology out there that does not believe this to be true and if you subscribe to that theology you are welcome to be wrong but just know that you are wrong (laughs) God speaks and I'm living proof of it as I will hear the problem is as I will prove sorry the problem is our our ears get so cluttered these days don't they we're listening to so many different things we have ears for oh the, the media we have ears for reels on our phones we have ears for TikTok Hello. We have ears for our spouse, our kids, perhaps our family. We have ears for all these other things. But do we have ears for God? Here's what you need to know is that God seldom yells. That's why you have to stay sensitive to him. Because when he speaks, it's a whisper. 
And you might think, why would God whisper? Can he just make it super obvious? Have you ever had the thought like, man, if I just saw a sign from God, like I, I feel like maybe he wants me to do this thing, choose this path, take, take this way. But if he would just make it abundant, like if he would just peel open the sky and have his giant finger come down and say, serve me, then I would do it. Like that's all I need, God. That's all I need. And God's like, uh, that's not how I work. <laughs> he speaks to us in a whisper, doesn't he? Why does he do that? It's because he wants us close. He wants us to lean in and be dependent upon him. You have to be sensitive to the spirit. You have to quiet the noise. You have to carve out that time if you want to hear from him. And, and notice it was late at night, and, and Samuel woke up because he heard the voice of God. It was still. And it was so real to him, he thought it was the high priest Eli. So he runs downstairs, knocks on the door, and he says, hey, hey yeah, you called me? And Eli's like, it wasn't me. Like, what, you got the, what are you doing? Three times he did this. You called me again? No, it wasn't me. You called? No. Oh, he's like, I know what's going on here. God's calling you. Go lay down. And the next time it happens, he said, say this. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Now, Samuel would go on to become the premier prophet of the Old Testament. So powerful were those whispers of God that not one thing that Samuel prophesied about didn't come to pass. Not one word that he would speak would fail. God whispered to Samuel to go to Jesse's house to anoint the next king of Israel. You might be familiar with this story. And, and Jesse brought out seven sons. And each time Samuel would have looked at those sons and God whispered to him, that's not the one. How about this one? That's not the one. Seven times. But Samuel was so convinced he had heard the voice of God because he'd become familiar and sensitive to these whispers. And God told him, go to Jesse's house. You will anoint the next king. And he saw the seven sons, and the whisper said, it's none of these. And so Samuel said, hey, Jesse, you got any more sons? Because, like, God's never wrong. And Jesse's like, yeah, there's, there's one more. He's out in the field. And he's like, oh. in my mind, I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, I said, bring all your sons, and you only brought most of them? So he brings David, and as David walks in, the Holy Spirit whispers to Samuel and says, that's the one. Anoint him as king, and he will be the next king of Israel. And if you know the story of David, he goes out, kills a bear, kills a lion, kills a giant, becomes the greatest king. Why? Because Samuel listened to the whispers of God. You need to learn this lesson, friend. This might not be the most dynamic message you ever hear, but it might be the most important. It might be the thing that takes you from a casual believer trying to just kind of go to church every once in a while and do this thing into having a relationship with God. You know what relationship is, is founded on? Communication, right? Right? And so many believers tragically say, listen, I, I, I read my Bible or I go to church or I do the whatever the thing we think we should be doing. And we don't know how to hear God's voice. It's hard to have a relationship with an invisible God when you don't hear his voice. Hello? Anybody relate to that? Nobody wants to raise their hand. They're like, oh, I hear from God every day. He speaks. Listen, this is, this is not easy, but it's possible. In my own life, man, I, I had this crossroads situation this transition where I was in community college, where my community college people, yeah, anybody? You're not afraid, yeah. And we, we, we went that route, and I was trying to get my degree because we're all taught, you know, you go to college, get a good job, get a degree, and then work there for 80 years and die, and it's all going to work out. And uh, I was stressed out. Because I, I didn't know what I was going to major in, what university I was going to transfer to. And at that time, naively, I thought, well, the thing you major in is the thing you're stuck doing your whole life, right? And so I got to get this right. And I was praying. I was fasting. I was like, God, what do you have for me? And I had a few ideas. I thought maybe I would get into marketing and advertising. And I was like, yeah, that kind of interests me. And, and then I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what God says about this because he, if I believe the Bible that says he created me in my mother's womb, I didn't evolve out of a single cell organism billions of years ago or eventually I crawled out of this primordial soup and became a, a man from a Japan Z. No, I believe in creation. 
Anybody? I believe that God made us. He formed you in your mother's womb, and he didn't just make you haphazardly, but with intention. He's given us a purpose. He has created us to do good things. And so I wanted to know, what is that purpose, God? And it just so happened that around that time, I uh, became aware of this opportunity to go to Australia and and study at a Bible college and kind of take a break from the community college to university path. And I I was like, God, do you want me to do that? And the whisper of God said, yes. I said, all right, if if this is your will. And so I went there and I had one prayer on my heart. If you've been to pizza with the pastors, I share this, this story often. And I was just praying, God, what is my purpose? Like, I don't want to mess this up. This is big stuff. And so I prayed every single day, many times a day. I prayed for days. I prayed for weeks. I prayed for months. And as I've shared, we were in a worship setting. And before the band started playing, a pastor came out and he said, I really have this sense, a whisper, that somebody in this room is going to get revealed your your life's purpose. And I was like, that's, that's why I'm here. Yes, please. And I remember it so vividly, although it was 20 years ago, that makes me feel old, that I was standing there with my eyes closed and I had my hands raised because real Christians raise their hands during worship. (laughs) And I had a vision from God like I have never experienced before. And I saw his hand with just one index finger pointed at me. And you know how you just sometimes you know, you know you have a dream and you're just like, I just... I don't I can't I can't explain how I knew but I just knew like there was uh, there were people there with me and you know it was one of those things like I knew it was God's hand and he spoke one word and he said pastor and something shifted inside of me guys I started crying weeping like heavily and listen I'm I'm not a crier I'm 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 a man <laughs> Now I cry at movies all the time like I'm, <laughs> I'm a softy but uh this was different. I was, I was crying. I was like, oh, my gosh, what's happening to me? Like, uh. <laughs> And so then what did I do? The next days and weeks, I kept saying, God, what did you create me for? What's my purpose? Like, I was so full of faith, and I received the answer from heaven that I kept asking the same thing. And the Holy Spirit kept whispering, I've already appointed you. I've already appointed you. And I was like, oh, that was you? And how many of you know, sometimes when God whispers to your heart, it contradicts the way that you think. It contradicts the plans you may already have. And I did not see myself as a pastor. I had an image of a pastor. And it was the pastor of the church I grew up with. God bless him. Great guy. He just had a mullet and pleated pants. And I was like, no. Uh Uh-uh. Can't do it. (laughs) And God's like, hey, you can be you and do what I've created you to do. But still, I didn't, want, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to be a pastor. And, and I was like, listen, I got some other plans. Like, I've got, that just seems it's so not me. And the more I, I leaned into it and he confirmed it through other people, and I realized that it wasn't just something I was going to do, but it was who he created me to be. Because I heard the whisper of God. Similarly, I, I came home from Bible college, and I was excited. I finally had got my direction. I got some purpose. I knew the, per- the thing that I was put on this planet to do. And so I was so excited. My experience down at uh, Hillsong, and I'll, I'll proudly say I went to Hillsong, even though they've been bashed in the media lately, and there's documentaries, and look, some of that's true, and a lot of it isn't, and, and, and they're still one of the greatest churches on planet Earth, all right? So I need to say that publicly. Uh, unfortunately, I have to say that disclaimer nowadays, but I, I came back from Hillsong, and I was so excited, and I had met my uh, now wife, Tara, working at Mimi's Cafe, and I was sharing my experience with her, and she was so excited about my experience. She's like, I want to go to Australia. And I was like, no, 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 that's, uh-uh, I need, I, girl, you need to stay here with me. Like, <laughs> I've been praying for you like my whole life, <laughs> like, literally. And uh, my, my mom was uh, raised me as a little boy. We would pray for my future wife when I was a little kid. Parents, you got little kids, you need to do that. And uh, she was so excited, and she, she, did, she quit her job. She sold her car. She raised the money for tuition, and she was ready to go. And little did she know that she had a powerful, faith-filled boyfriend who prayed against those plans. 
She didn't go to Australia, guys. She stayed here, and we've been married for 15, 16 years in Jesus' name. Yeah, prayer works. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but we dated for two years, and with the intention of I wasn't just dating. I was, I was looking to get married. You know, and I said, listen, I'm not just messing around here. And she was like, good, me neither. And I was like, good. And, you know, unfortunately, I came from a broken home where my parents divorced and her parents divorced. And we said, listen, we're not going to divorce. If we're going to do this thing, we're going to do this thing for the long haul. And she's like, absolutely. We agreed in our dating phase. We don't believe in divorce. We just kicked it right out. And some of you need to do this. is not a marriage message today, but some of you need to do that. Because sometimes you get in fights and the enemy whispers these lies into your ears. And without intending to, you plant seeds of divorce. And you say, you know what? You keep this up and I'm out of here or whatever. And what you're doing is planting seeds for a future that you do not want, I promise you. And so if you remove that vocabulary out of your, your, your language and the thought process out of your mind, it changes changes how you fight. You learn how to fight better. And I've always just convinced you put two people in a room, no windows, no doors, and say, you got to work it out for the rest of your life. You're going to learn how to get along. Or one of you is going to end up dead. One of those things <laughs> is going to happen. I promise you. So don't kill your spouse. <laughs> so anyway, I'm dating Tara and we decided we're, if we're doing this, we're doing it. And but still, I had this, I, I tend to put, I guess, a lot of pressure on myself. I'm realizing right now, thank you so much for this counseling session. But um, I was so stressed. I was like, look, I don't want to get this wrong. Because the person I choose, like, this is it forever. And I remember so clearly we were in Florida on vacation. And my mom's here. I don't even know if you know this, Mom. But we were there. And, and uh, my, no, my mom was there on vacation, too. We didn't take a secret vacation while we are dating. Let me be clear. <laughs> See you, Mom. We're going to Florida. No. Family vacation. And um, we were staying in this condo. And Tara was, it was at night, condo on the beach. Tara was sitting on the balcony reading a book. I don't know what book. In my, let's just call it the Bible. That fits. <laughs> and uh, I was inside. I remember looking out the window, just seeing her there and the whisper of God. He just spoke to my heart and he said, marry her. That's your bride. And I was like, Whew. thank you, Lord. Like that, the clear, how many of you need some clarity in your life? Like, there's some big decisions we got to make about what you're going to do with your life, who you're going to spend your life with, what career, to, what job. Some of you are praying about moving to Tennessee. Like, don't do it. There's too many Christians there. I'm telling you. We need some Christians in California. Like, you need to hear from God. You need the whisper of God. And listen, Tar and I have been through some stuff. We've been through some stuff. We've been through a lot, but we go through it together. And our marriage is not perfect. She has her flaws, but we, <laughs> she's not in here. That's why I can get away with saying that. Uh, hey, yesterday was her birthday, by the way. When you see her, tell her happy birthday. She's 24 and she looks amazing. Um, <laughs> we don't have a perfect marriage, but we have a blessed marriage. And another story, I could go on and on, but another story, I, I wanted to do less of a teaching sermon today and just kind of share with you my heart and my experience, if that's okay. Share with you what I really believe can be the most impactful message that you have ever heard, if you will learn this and apply it to your life. I'm telling you that this has changed my, I wouldn't be here as a pastor today without this. I wouldn't have married Tara without this. Uh, like, I wouldn't, when it came to time to plant the church, God told me to plant the church in 2003, but then he told me to wait. A whisper. And so for seven years, always ironic when you look back, right? Seven years. I'm like, of course it was seven. God, that's just how you are. For seven years, we served in other church plants. And we did anything and everything we could. I didn't want to just come into a church with this, like, divine assignment and say, like, the Lord has called me. I'm the anointed one. Give me the microphone. <laughs> he has called me a pastor. Sorry, it wasn't me. It was him. So... So I just started serving. I just did anything. And for seven years, it was like, you know, Mr. Miyagi and Karate Kid. God was teaching me. He was like, wax on, wax on, stack those chairs, sucker. <laughs> like, <laughs> sweep the floor, literally. And like, all the things necessary to plant a church which would be portable for eight years and just doing all the pack away. And the, he was teaching me. And finally, after seven years, I was growing frustrated, guys. Because when you have a word from God and you're not doing it, that can be frustrating. Anybody been there? Because oftentimes he will give you a word to prepare you for the future, but he needs to prepare you because you're not ready yet. 
And that was my case. And so he was training me and he was showing me how to do this thing. And then I was growing more and more frustrated because I was like, man, I'm getting old. I'm like 29. And when, <laughs> when am I going to do this thing? And finally, at the, uh, the experienced age of 30, he spoke to my heart and said, a whisper. He said, it's time. And you would think after seven years of waiting and seven years of frustration, when I finally got the, the orders, the go time, I would have been excited. And I was terrified. <laughs> and I was like, uh, you know, maybe just a little longer, Lord. Like, uh, I could just use a little. And he said, I said, go. And I was like, whoa. It's a very clear whisper. And so we started the journey. And we started meeting in a home. And for those of you who know, we met for a year. And revival broke out. We grew from two people to like 12. And uh, <laughs> Outreach Magazine called. And they said, you got to tell us. How are you experiencing so much growth? And I said, it's just Jesus. I don't know. And <laughs> I'm telling you that these whispers of God change your life. You need this, friend. And I want to prophesy to you this morning as I'm preparing for this. I didn't want to just share with you my experience. I said, Lord, what do you want me to tell your sons and daughters? And I heard a whisper from God. Would you like to hear? He said, there is a whisper coming in your future. He wants to speak to you. He wants you to know that your greatest days are ahead of you. The whispers and the assignments and the direction he has for you are, are better than what you've already heard. It's not just a cliche. This is Something that will guide you. It will direct you because we know God has a plan for our lives. He has a whisper for you. And I believe this is so important when we get to major transitions or crossroads in our lives that we need to pray for Samuel ears. Ears that will hear God's voice. And not just hear that we would respond with, here I am, Lord, your servant. What do you want me to do? And can I encourage somebody, if he can pray, sorry, if he can speak to a knucklehead like me, he can speak to you. Do not make the mistake of putting me on a pedestal because I'm up here on the stage with a microphone. I am a regular guy, just like all of you, perhaps sin more than you do. And God spoke to me because I said, Lord, I'm willing. I want to hear your voice. You got to pray for Samuel ears. You don't have to be perfect. In fact, if you are, you're disqualified. <laughs> You don't have to have all your issues worked out. You don't have to be spiritually mature. You don't have to be killing it in the area of discipleship and sanctification. You need to have a willing heart that says, God, would you speak to me? That's the standard. Lord, I want to hear from you. Would you give me Samuel ears? And when we do this, I promise you, he wants to speak to you. And you can learn to hear God's voice. You can be sensitive to the spirit, and it will change your life. One more story. Uh, you know, we're in this beautiful movie theater, which has been here for 70 years. And I said just a few moments ago, we were portable for eight years. We met in middle school, high schools. We've been around. Some of you have been with us through it all. And you're like the OGs, Nancy Hook. I'm looking at you. You've been here for like a decade or more. And you, you, you've seen it all. We, we used to take a big old 25-foot box truck and unpack everything and set it all up and have worship and preach the word and then pack it all away for eight plus years. And then, you know, this little thing happened called COVID and we got shut down. We're doing online. And, and then after doing online, for, at first it's fun, right, everybody? It's new. And it's like, wow, we were reaching like thousands of people online. This is amazing. And then, that you know, that just started dipping and dipping. And so looking ahead, we're like, this is not sustainable. Like, we can't do online forever. Some of you are still watching online from COVID. And God's word and whisper for you today is get your booty in church. Because <laughs> anyway. Uh, so we started looking for a space. Of course, we couldn't meet in public schools anymore. And we looked and we looked and I couldn't find a suitable building that was open. And everything was shut down. And we found this one Green Oak Ranch. If anybody familiar with, it's an obscure ranch in Vista. And if you don't, if you've never been there, you, you, you'll, you'll never know where it is. It's kind of hidden. It's like a little secret. And uh, on the secret hidden ranch, there was an obscure building at the top of this hill with a dirt road called the Wagon Wheel. They called it that because the chandeliers were made out of 
wagon wheels. And they had like fake wood paneling on the walls and it smelled like an 80s Christian camp. It was terrible. And that was the only space we could find. We would have zero visitors in that place. Like even our own people would have a hard time finding us. And I was like, Lord, this is not your best. <laughs> and I didn't want to settle. And so I would I literally one day I got in my truck and I was driving around North County, San Diego. And every time I got to an intersection, whether it be a stop sign or a light, I said, Holy Spirit, which way should I go? And uh, he would whisper to me. And it's not like an audible voice. It's sometimes it's an unction. You know what I mean? It's a it's a, a tapping. And it's like, okay, I feel like that was right. You might think that's weird, but I, I just really believed that God would leave. I said, you know where a better spot is. I don't. <laughs> and I did that for an hour or so until eventually I got right over here near Olive Garden uh, because Jesus likes breadsticks. And he said, <laughs> he whispered to me and he said, pull over. And I was like, I can go for some breadsticks. All right. Um, and I got out and I noticed there's all these, all these uh, stores with four lease signs. And so I'm, I'm peeking in the window and every single one of them is just empty. And I'm like, that's better than the wagon wheel. That's better than the wagon wheel. Like, sure, it's close to the freeway and Olive Garden, right? Like, come on. And so I started calling the numbers and, and leaving messages and getting calls back. And I'm like, hey, listen, we're a church, you know, COVID, blah, blah, blah. We're looking for a space. And everybody said the same thing. Said, no, we won't rent to a church. It has to be retail. And after, you know, three, four, five, six, seven no's. And I don't take no easily. I'm just like, no, listen, I, I had a whisper. And so I was like, we will do what it takes. We'll get the permit, that the, whatever, from the city, the conditional use permit. We'll make it happen. And they're just like, you can do whatever you want. We're not going to rent to you. And I was like, okay, Lord. Like, why that whisper? Why that whisper? And then three days later, I'm not making this up, I got a text from a man named Cody. And Cody was pastoring a church right, right here, like literally right here in this building, different stage. And uh, he had been in this building for three years. And he said, hey, John, look, this is, this is how God works. I don't even know Cody. I don't even know how he got my number. <laughs> and he texted me and said, hey, we're moving out of the movie theater I thought of you, and I wonder if you want to move in. And I was like, that's funny, because I'm looking for a space. And weird, God just led me right, like right over by that area. And I couldn't figure out why. I said, so, all right, let's talk numbers. Like, what are you guys paying? And tell me what they pay in rent. And I said, I, you must have left a zero off, because that seems too good to be true. And he's like, you want to call? I was like, let's chat. Long story short, we move in the building. And, and it just, looking back, it just confirms, obviously, God led me over there to get me ready to be okay with this area, to give me the confirmation that he needs, because he's outside of time. Sorry, the confirmation I need. He's outside of time. He knows the future. He knows what's best for us. He's got good plans. I'm so thankful for the whispers of God. And we moved in here, and it was a massive risk, and we spent a lot of money and spent a year remodeling and almost a quarter million dollars invested into making this space beautiful. And we would not have done that unless we had received a whisper from God. This is how he works. When you have Samuel ears, God can speak to you. People all around you, perhaps right now, sitting to your right and sitting to your left, may not hear anything in a message, but God can speak directly to you right where you sit. And whispers, they almost feel reckless at times. They require you to step out. They require you to... Uh, oftentimes defy your own thinking and logic. They require sacrifice, courage, risk. You got to step out when God gives you a word, and, and it doesn't always come comfortably. <laughs> like, you're like, why? I don't, I don't get it. Why? Why? And he's just like, trust me. When God called Elisha, Elijah just put his cloak on him for a second and then took it off. That was it. You need to know Elisha was a farmer. His family was farmers. He had 12 yoke of oxen. He had servants. He had wealth, and he was set to inherit it all. But then the prophet of God walked by, and the whisper of God spoke to his heart. And the Bible says in that moment, he broke his plow. He slew the cows and offered a sacrifice and then ran after Elijah. And that mantle finally fell upon Elisha. And the Bible says he received double the spirit that Elijah had, had double the amount of miracles even after his death because he followed the whisper. How powerful are the whispers of God? 
This is how we do this thing, guys. It's not a religious set of to-dos or don'ts. It's not just a, I got to get disciplined enough to, you know, memorize Scripture. And listen, memorize Scripture. Absolutely. I, I got to read my Bible. Read your Bible. Oftentimes, the most prevalent way God speaks to us is through his word. And he will remind you of something he's already said through a gentle whisper to confirm what he has for you right here and right now. But know this, that following the whispers of God requires sacrifice. You have to be willing to say, not my will, God, not my plan, whatever you have for me. It will require, it's going to cost you something. Are you willing to count the cost? It will require you burning your plow. It will require you burning the ship so there's no going back. Matthew 4, Jesus said, it's written, man shall not live off bread alone, but on what? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Don't proceed until you get his direction. Don't think you got it all figured out because oftentimes when you choose the wise or smart decision or the logical path, it contradicts what God has for you because he doesn't always make sense. But his ways are greater. His way, the way he thinks is higher. I believe the Lord is ready to speak a new preceding word to every single person within the sound of my voice. He wants to speak to us. He wants to give us things we don't know, things about our future that we, we, we're, we're praying about, perhaps you're stressed about. Think about Abraham for a second. God told him, get up early in the morning and take your son, the answer to your lifelong promise, the, the thing you've been praying about. You're, this is the way that you're going to be a father. You're going to be from Abram to Abraham, which means father. It's, this is the answer. I want you to take it up to the mountain and kill him. The whispers of God, they're going to require sacrifice. And Abraham got up early. He didn't delay, and he did it. But if we know the story, he raises the knife to kill his own son, and the whisper of God spoke to his heart and said, no, stop. It was a test. Now, listen, God is not asking anybody to kill their kids. That's not the message. That God is looking for those who are sensitive enough to hear his voice and respond in obedience. Genesis 22 says, The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord. Sorry, some of you who are super religious, Jesus, God swore one time right there in Scripture. I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. What was the test? That he could hear the whisper of God and respond in faith. And God is going to send new direction and new orders today, and it will take you into the path that God has for you from the beginning of time. It is about hearing his whispers. Anybody want to hear a whisper from God today? Anybody need to hear a word? You're like, you got a decision, you got a thing, you're worried about your kids, you don't know what to do. You're like, God, I don't know if I could do this any longer. You need desperately a whisper from God. And I'm telling you, one whisper from God can change the trajectory of your life forever. When God speaks and gives you a whisper, it's, it's usually about others. It's usually about eternity. It's bigger than just you and what you have going on. Remember, Elijah was depressed. He was in a cave, and he wanted to die, and he heard from God. And I'll close with this story, 1 Kings 19. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. Verse 15, the Lord said to him, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu son of Nimshi king over Israel. And anoint Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Mechola to succeed you as prophet. I'm just proud that I didn't mess up any of those words right there. That was that's what I was praying about. <laughs> but God gave Elijah, a whisper, and one whisper affected three generations. One whisper from God has power. One word from heaven is all you need. You might say, man, I haven't heard from God 
in years, but just be faithful to continue doing the last thing he whispered to you, and you will hear that good, well done, good and faithful servant someday. But I don't believe God just wants to speak to you one time, and that's it. God wants to whisper to you today. You remember Peter was in the middle of a storm. One word from Jesus, come. And he gets out of the boat, and he's walking on water. You know, there's only two kinds of people in the world. There are dry boat people or wet water walkers. If you want to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat. And you're never going to have courage to walk on water until you learn to hear him in the middle of a storm. Listen, don't listen to the dry boat people. They're going to tell you not to do it. you got to shut out that noise and choose to listen to the whisper of God, to follow the prompting of God. When you do this, supernatural things happen. When you do this, you are in the perfect center of God's will. When you learn how to do this, your your, his will for your life, your best life comes to fruition. I'm telling you, friends, like I, I wouldn't be here today without this. I wouldn't be married to my, the love of my life without this. We wouldn't be in this building without this. I promise you, you don't want to be in the wagon wheel. <laughs> I don't even think they have AC. All right, like this is better. <laughs> The greatest assignments and the set of directions are not in your past. Can I prophesy this to you this morning? Your greatest whispers are not in your past. God still wants to speak to your heart today. And one of these days, you will hear the greatest whisper. The Bible says in Revelation 3, the one who is victorious will like them be dressed in white. That's speaking to you and me. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my father and his angels. When we get to the end of our lives, the Bible tells us that Jesus will call your name. And I don't want you to be afraid of that voice. I want you to recognize that voice. Listen, I'm not afraid to die, for I know what awaits. We close our eyes on this side of eternity. We open our eyes in paradise, where the Bible says the streets are paved with gold. There's no sin. There's no sickness. There's no disease or poverty or crime or evil or inflation. There's no Democratic Party or Republican Party. There is a king, and he sits on the throne, ruling and reigning rightly. There is everything as it was supposed to be in heaven. I'm not afraid to die. It's an upgrade. And so at that day, when we finally get to the end of our lives, nobody knows exactly when that is. We will hear the voice of God and he will call out your name and it will be a recognizable voice if we learn the invaluable lesson of hearing his whisper now. Don't let that be the first time you hear his voice. It'll terrify you. (laughs) Heaven is your home and he, he wants to to steer you, to direct you, to guide you. And he does this through these gentle whispers. So today I wonder if there's anybody who says, man, I want to pray for Samuel ears. I want to be like Samuel. He says, Lord, here I am, your servant. What would you have for me to do? And I believe in this moment that God can and will speak if we will open up our hearts and our ears to receive from him. Amen? Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you that you want to speak to us. I pray that we would be like Samuel, that we would open up our hearts, we would open up our our ears to hear you today, for we know that one word from you, one whisper from heaven can change everything. Lord, I want to pray for everybody within the sound of my voice who hasn't heard from you in a while. Perhaps they never have. I want to pray for those who have a, a transition or a major decision to make or God something that is pressing on their heart doesn't matter how big or small something that is weighing on them and they 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 feel like perhaps they're at the end of their rope and they need to hear from you God I thank you that we don't have to have all the answers or great intellect or deep wisdom to follow you and to walk in your perfect will but Holy Spirit I pray that you would whisper to our hearts this morning so God as we As we seek you, I thank you that you make yourself real, that you want to speak to us. And Lord, may you find us faithful and obedient. Maybe God is telling you a a certain direction to take right now. Oftentimes it's one word, literally just one word. Perhaps God is putting a name on your heart of somebody, somebody 
who he wants you to reconcile with, forgive, somebody he wants you to, to treat differently, treat better. Lord, I don't know what it is, but I know that God speaks. I know he has whispers that he wants to direct us with and to guide us with. And so right now, would you just open your heart and say, Lord, give me Samuel ears. I want to hear from you. I will respond in faith. It may not make sense. You may not know exactly what he means at first. You may know exactly what he wants and you don't want to do it. <laughs> That's how you know it's from him. Holy Spirit, would you breathe on us? Would you whisper to our hearts? Thank you that you're speaking all throughout this room. Thank you that you have good plans in store. You want to lead us. You want to guide us. And Lord, as your people, as your sheep, we want to be led. We don't want to miss out on what you have for us. I feel like it's easy to gloss over this moment. I just want to pause. I want to recognize this is a holy moment. There are people in this room who are receiving divine instructions from heaven. Perhaps something you've been praying about for months or years. God is making that clear to you now. Perhaps there's something that you've been holding on to that is robbing you. There may be unforgiveness in your heart. And God is saying, I want to release healing and blessings. I want to release peace and joy. But you have to forgive. No, they don't deserve it. <laughs> yes, what they did was terrible. But just as God said to us, freely I give, freely you receive. It's about not forgiving those who deserve it, but forgiving those because we have been forgiven. I don't know what it is, but I feel like God is speaking to several people in this room, and if you will obey to his, his voice, his whisper, it will change your life for the good. Holy Spirit, thank you that you still speak. Thank you that you are alive and leading us and guiding us. I pray that we would walk out of here today with instruction and clarity, knowing what we need to do, and we would respond with faith and obedience. It's in your holy name we pray. Everybody said amen, amen. I pray you hear the whisper of God today. Maybe you just did. If not, just keep asking him. Sometimes he does it instantly. Sometimes it takes weeks and months. But if you will keep asking him, here I am, Lord, would you speak to my heart? And then don't doubt it, because the enemy would love to snatch that seed and go, that's not God. That was just you. No. Just keep, if you keep praying, he'll tell you, just like he did with me. I've already appointed you. He said, I already showed you. I already told you. Keep on seeking, and those whispers of God will lead us into the best he has for us. Amen. Amen. Would you stand to your feet? We're going to sing and worship together one more time. If you didn't hear a whisper from God, perhaps you will during this next song. But God bless you. We'll see you out front. Thank you, guys.
There's also that intimacy when you whisper that you have to be listening. And that message is special to you. No one can hear it. No one else can get it except for you. So as you go out today, be expecting to hear that whisper of God. We all need that in life. And know that you are special. And he's looking for you. And he wants to talk to you. And he loves you. Let's go and have a great week. We love you all. And we'll see you next week. God bless you all.